Oh my God. What? Nothing, nothing at all, Butch. For the love of What's that doing there? What's it doing? It's yelling, mock me, mock me. It shouldn't be there. Go, oh, no, you're right. It should uh, have its own special display at the diner with a big old spotlight on I it. I need my permission for this. This should be illegal. Uh, those shorts with that tank top should be illegal. Okay, stop now. <laughs> I grew up uh, in the suburbs outside DC, so it was more like, um, you know, diplomats' kids and lawyers' kids, and everybody's parents was fairly political. My dad and I originally moved out there because I was really into horseback riding, and there were all these places where you could ride. I rode from the time I was five. I went to horseback riding camp every summer, and then I got my first play, and that was sort of the beginning of a new passion. We had just moved when I was in eighth grade. I believe that was the year I had glasses, braces, and a cast, which is just not, <laughs> it's just not gonna get you invited to the, you know, Sadie Hawkins dance. And I was kind of a tomboy. I didn't like wearing skirts. I didn't own one until I was forced to because I had like a flute recital or something. I also played the flute. <laughs> These are painful memories. Being back here doesn't make you nostalgic at all. I had the really curly, crazy hair that's now been just like beaten into submission. And also like the pony Tail, like on top of the head, you know, the fountain kind of 80s. It's bad, it's all bad. I was late, can, can we re-vote? I was part of this strange branch of student council where we were apparently like involved in um, county policy, which meant that one day a month you could sign yourself out and go supposedly <laughs> to some county meeting where they were discussing something and you were like the student representative. And as I remember, we made many trips to McDonald's and I think <laughs> the student policies were improved. I just don't know how this whole second boyfriend thing is supposed to go. Well, he's your first second boyfriend. Give it time. I didn't have a lot of boyfriends. I had one um, major high school boyfriend. I had a great high school experience that way because I had just one person who was, you know, really important and, and and, uh, and, and still a good friend. I grew up in a, in a big city in Houston. I didn't participate much in, in school stuff. In high school, I guess I was just sort of, I wasn't like into like being super social. The minute I walk into that room, I'm suddenly gonna have to sign yearbooks. I had my group of friends that I liked and you can't really fit us in any group, and that's kind of how I liked it. I don't think I was terribly fashionable. Stop primping and get out here! It was pretty plain. Jeans and t-shirts. That's big in Texas. I moved to New York when I went to college. Oh my god, I missed everything. When you're 18, you just want to go do your own thing, you know, and you want to go see a new place, or I did. And then you do that, and then you just want to go home, because, like, you know, you miss, like, mom's home cooking and stuff like that. <laughs> I grew up in a place that was a little uh, more diversified, but not too dissimilar, you know. It was a, a bedroom community of Philadelphia. I was uh, a little bit withdrawn, a little quiet, but aggressive on the ball fields. I uh, played a lot of sports. I had a late adolescent rebellion and decided that I didn't need any of that stuff, and I grew my hair and started playing the guitar, writing songs, writing plays, and getting artsy. I was actually in a rock band. From the time I was in third grade, we had two songs. I'm not your st stepping stone and back in the USSR. And I was a singer, lead singer. And uh, I was fired, I was let go many times and every year rehired because there were jealousy issues. When I was a, a, a little kid and it would snow, there were a lot of older kids who would pick on us as we were walking to school every day. You know, they'd beat us up, they'd throw snowballs at us. But I had the golden arm and uh, I defended my pack of guys. We'd make ice balls, we'd put them in the freezer night before, and we were armed and ready. No problem. Everybody wanted to walk to school with me. I defended the youth culture. At present, I live in a little town in Connecticut that is probably as close to Stars Hollow as it's possible to be. I grew up in a, in a posh uh, community uh, called Gross Point Farms outside Detroit, but I was born in DC. In high school, I was kind of a dreamy, useless student. I wasn't a very good student, and I didn't get into theater at all. Uh, I thought they were all strange. Looking at the yearbook, they were all strange. I didn't run with a fast crowd at all. 
It was my senior year in high school that I began running with the fast crowd as the joker. I was the, there were about 10 of us. I didn't feel terribly accepted until that senior year and then it, then it turned around a bit and then college came. I was a terribly romantic boy. I double dated in my senior year with uh, Mike Miller who was a very slick guy and he had a beautiful date. And her friend who was a, a, a nutball and she was drinking unbeknownst to me. We went out to Belle Isle and she'd been drinking peach schnapps or brandy or something like that and then proceeded to throw up and pass out. So that was my great evening. I've always wanted to live in one of these charming little small towns. I grew up in Hell's Kitchen. High school I went to Puerto Rico. I wanted to study in Spanish but I, I went to New York City school system. I got interested in theater in high school. Yes, yes, it was high school. Mr. Denoya, it was through the drama club. He picked me for the children's theaters tours he used to do in upstate New York, all over New York. I got a full scholarship to NYU because you had to audition and you had to have a classical speech prepared. Okay, so this is how he did it. He said, friends, Romans, countrymen, yo, let me your ears, all right? Now, the noble Brutus have told you that Caesar was ambitious. So that's the way I did it. And I got a full scholarship to NYU. <laughs> I grew up in Denver, so I grew up in suburbia, and my last two years of high school, actually last three years of high school, I was in Northern California. I went to New York when I was 18, so I really lived in New York most of my life. I was a ballet dancer, so that was, at that point in uh, this country, that was the place to be. I started my training when I was about six. I was supposed to wait until I was eight, because that's the ideal age, but I was uh, very eager. I was not a good student. I was a real daydreamer. Uh, I simply didn't want to be there, and uh, I was shy. In junior high, be, again, this came out of shyness. I started to hang out with the tough kids, and I think it's just because they were the outcasts, and I felt like an outcast. I remember thinking, I just wanted to grow up. I wanted to be an adult. I wanted to be in control of my own life. I had this drama teacher. His name was Mr. Deck or Mr. Decker. They were doing the school play. It was going to be The Importance of Being Earnest. And he wanted me to play Gwendolyn. And he talked to me and I simply said, I can't make every rehearsal. I would love to do it, but I, the ballet, you know I'm going to be a ballet dancer. I, you know, this is important. And bless his heart, he cast me in it anyway. And that did so much for my confidence. It, that, that was important to me. He was a wonderful teacher. I grew up in Hawaii. I grew up on Oahu. I have three sisters. They're all girls, they're all younger than me. I was very odd. I mean, in, in junior high, believe it or not, band was the thing. I'm not kidding. Band is big. I was very lost in intermediate school, I think. I really didn't find my place. I was kind of a fringe person. And my high school is a little different because I switched schools. It was a wonderful, amazing experience. I hung out with the the drama geeks and the drama nerds, and we were, you know, this little community within the school. We just talked to each other. One of my most distinct memories from high school is this picture of me for prom. Uh, this will not be the mental image you carry around with me the rest of the week. I had this borrowed dress from my boyfriend's mom. Hold on, I just saw the back. Yes, it will. It's this big poofy um, sleeve. It's gold. The sleeves are gold. They come out about this big, believe it or not. And it's like this brocaded, like corsety thing. It almost sounds like a costume. And then the skirt kind of poofs out, and then it has like ribbon design. Interesting, isn't it? One of the hardest things about moving to LA was leaving Hawaii. So it kind of took me a while to settle in and find my friends. I think once you find your friends in a new place, that, that always makes it a little better. I grew up in Montreal, which is a much bigger city. I spent three or four years of my childhood in a smaller town. I'm more of a big city guy, so I was bored out of my mind when we lived in the country. 
I didn't like school. I didn't like myself. I had some problems also with the fact that I was almost the only black child in my class. I was the only black child in my class, but I was, there was not so many black people in the school. So a lot of people were teasing me with that. I had problems with it. Couldn't wait to get out of high school and uh, become someone, somebody and do something I like. Yes, uh, my name is Michel Girard. I used to work at the independent scene, and I was wondering if there were any positions available. The first job I ever got in my life, I was a busboy in a bar, and uh, we did a staff show at the end of the summer, and it was the summer of Thriller, and I ended up doing Michael Jackson, uh, and the choreography and everything. It was fun. I mean, I had fun. It was my first experience on stage, and I must say to this day that it had a huge effect on me because at that moment I, I, ha I was so in peace. I had so much fun. I had recognition from people. People thought I was cool suddenly. So it gave me this, huh? Like I thought, okay, there's something in this for me. I grew up mostly in uh, Lansdale, Pennsylvania, which is kind of a small town. It's like 45 minutes outside of Philadelphia. The elementary school was, was, I guess, kind of my favorite part of that town. It was kind of this old schoolhouse that you could walk to. I had a really rough time in high school. I was like the worst student ever. I played lacrosse and field hockey in, in junior high, but I kind of you know, started doing acting stuff when I was 12, so I was commuting to New York for auditions. I kind of hung out with all the people that were like doing the drama stuff, really. I got the senior superlative of uh, most dramatic in high school, which was a, kind of a dubious honor, I guess. <laughs> I was kind of outgoing um, when I was younger, but then I guess once you start hitting puberty, you all you kind of turn shy and, and quiet, which I'm still kind of painfully shy. I grew up in suburban St. Louis, uh, in a uh, wonderful state of Missouri. I was not a quiet kid by any means. I'm the youngest of six, and so if you're a quiet kid and you're the youngest of six, nobody will ever hear you. I was very much a center of attention in the family and um, in a family full of people who like to be the center of attention. So it was pretty, I, I lived in a pretty loud house growing up. I would say that I was basically the class clown. By the time I got to high school, I was I started to be a rowdy sort of, a uh, little bit of a troublemaker. I, I was really into theater in high school, so I was like, I did a, a, a whole bunch of plays. If you're funny enough and, and a class clown, you can still sort of hang out with the cool kids, even if the girls don't like you very much. Even though I think I was kind of miserable at the time, I look back and think of high school as being fun. I grew up in the Midwest, but I grew up in a really, a really tiny little farm town by the by the exciting name of Plainfield. I have one sister, one older sister, Margie, who's fantastic, but we fought like uh, animals growing up. I always thought I could take her, but uh, she was older, so had longer arms, and she'd actually do the horrible head holding, and just my arms like pinwheeling trying to get to her. I ran away in kindergarten, which was awkward and horrible. This girl, Teresa, who I guess was like the troublemaker, was like, stay out here. So at five, I was like, all right, okay. And the whole plan, which I didn't know until we got there, was to go to her babysitters, which is a terrible idea because you're only going to get in trouble. So I remember crossing up the yard and then having her babysitter pull in the yard because we weren't supposed to be getting home. And just the look on her face of like, what are you doing here? And then I was like, what are we doing? My dad's really funny. We're just weird. Like we do, str I'm sure it's not normal family behavior. For some reason we did a lot of scaring. So it, was really, it got really elaborate and probably semi-dangerous. My tip, attack low, fast, and make some slightly animal noise, but a not detectable animal noise, and it really scares people. My dad still, my mom will be on the phone with me, and she's just talking normally, and all of a sudden it'll be like, oh my god, oh, oh. It's like your dad was in the closet. Oh God, he had a coat on his head. Like there's still, I love that like my dad at any given moment is somewhere like if we were in this room, like he's in the desk and like you open it up, my, my dad's in there like, it's just, it's, re it's really weird. It's really weird. Also, if you have a tablecloth under the tables of a dining room table, you lay across that, they can't see you. 
and let somebody be in the room for about 10, 15 minutes, and then you come out at them, it's, it's like, it's magical. It's magical because it's that mix of, of fear and anger because they're so mad at you. Yeah.